I've always been fascinated by the weird and wonderful in prehistoric animals, and there sure have been some favourites. The useless arms of Carnotaurus, the sheer bulk of the sauropods, the different ornamentations of the ceratopsians, the list goes on and on. But there's one non-dinosaur reptile that's fascinated me ever since I heard of it. It's a marine reptile from Yunnan, China. And while my little knowledge of marine reptiles goes only as far as Plesiosaurus, Mosasaurus, and Lyplurodon, when I first heard of this mid-Triassic animal, I was hooked. <laughs> now, this miserable looking wretch is Atopo dentatus. And I guess if you look like that, you'd be pretty miserable too. When first found, it was believed to have this really weird vertical zipper mouth, a name Atopodentatus, which means unusual tooth. Eventually, it was realized that's not how it looked, because that was based off a damaged skull, and this is more how it looked like. Unfortunate, because paleoartists can no longer enjoy drawing this Lovecraftian monster, but fortunate because it didn't have to change names. The hammerhead structure with the shovel jaws is still unusual, and now we think it scraped algae off rocks and then hoovered them into that wide mouth. Now, I don't have many Triassic non-dinosaurs, though I do have the old Carnegie Tennis Trophies, and now I'm glad to have this. This model was done by PNSO, a Chinese company that's become extremely popular for the quality of their excellent models. Now, I'm glad they're producing prehistoric creatures from China, such as Microraptor, Qingdaosaurus, Yongchuansaurus, and of course, my favorite, Huanghe Titan. They've actually done Atopodentatus before, a tiddler only 10 centimeters long. Now, this one, if measured with a string from nose to tail, is 28 centimeters, which is about 11 inches long. And based on an estimate of 3 meters, which is about 10 feet, that makes this a 1 to 10 scale. Now, at this scale, you don't see individual teeth, but the rows are painted very well with no bleeding. And the weirdness of the head is really captured in 3D. Now, it's really well painted with a clownfish or perhaps a lionfish type of color scheme, which probably serves to break up the outline of the animal for camouflage. Now, there's a gloss over it, making it look wet or slimy, which is really appropriate underwater. Now, postcranially, the color is a mix of browns and ochre. Now, I like banded patterns, but these aren't straight bands, but uh, it's kind of asymmetrical lightning streak or marbling pattern, which I love. Now, the way they're painted with these soft edges make it look really natural. The whole look is really very pleasing to my eye. Oh, there's also counter shading with a darker top transitioning very subtly to the lighter underside, a color scheme you'll see in many underwater animals. A predator or prey looking up from below can't make out the animal against the sun, and looking down can't quite separate the animal from the darker bottom. Now, the arms are thick and heavily muscled, very robust, and on the underside, uh, the, the animal's mostly smooth to keep it streamlined, yet it retains some texture on the hands and the feet. You can also appreciate how well adapted and pedal-like um, these are. The tail is flattened to aid in swimming and curves really very nicely. So collectively, everything creates a believable picture of a very unusual, very aquatic swimming reptile. And if we just have a look at the pose, it's done so well because almost any angle, it looks good. And it looks like it's really swimming through water. If you like non-reptiles, or you know, want to add something from the Triassic pre-dinosaur boom period, or just plain weird and wonderful with great proportions, scientific accuracy, very, very nicely painted. 
I fully recommend the PNSO Etopo Dentatus. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.